Okay, here we are. This is Jay Brown Yoga Talks Podcast. My name is Jay Brown. Welcome to you if it's your first time here today. And to everyone else, what's up? How's everyone doing? I'm back. I am returned. If you were listening last week, then you know I was away for a week. I was on a once in a lifetime family vacation to Hawaii which I'm happy to say went quite well. There was one initial hurdle, which is that three days before we left, I started to come down with these really bad headaches and body aches and kind of chills and then woke up with a very pronounced bullseye rash on my thigh and was diagnosed with Lyme's disease. Fortunately, I responded very well to treatment. We caught it early. I think I was lucky. I was lucky that I got the rash because I guess there's a lot of people who who don't get the rash. And if if I didn't get the rash, there's no way I would have gone to the doctor. But fortunately, I responded well very quickly and it didn't even end up getting in the way of the trip, I'm happy to say. And... It was just pretty fantastic, actually, to be in Hawaii. My sister, shout out to Melissa and her husband, Kurt. They've been many times, and they gave us what I would consider to be like an authentic Hawaii experience where we we hung out with people who live there and went and had a barbecue with them at the public park. You know, we didn't go on like big tourist you know, high cost tours. So we didn't get to see all the big sites or whatever, but we got a very authentic experience of being with the Honu with the sea turtles and going swimming and doing some snorkeling and just taking in the Ohana spirit. The the life vibe there was very strong and It was wonderful. You know, massive doses of vitamin D every day with that incredibly strong sun. So I'm happy to say the trip went well. We did hit one snag on the way home too, which was that uh, the power went out at the San Francisco airport five minutes after we landed. So that kind of delayed us on the way home. So the, the way home was a bit of a slog, but in the end we survived. And I would say that the memories we made are worth the credit card debt I now bear. (laughs) Sometimes, you know, you throw caution to the wind and you just just go for the joy and the love and you hope for the best. (laughs) And I'm back, getting back into a summer swing of things. I hope whoever you are that's listening to this I hope that you're doing okay, and I really appreciate that you've chosen to listen. I am in a very nostalgic mood, I would say, after being with my sister, who I don't see very often, and spending all this time with my family. And just now, as a matter of fact, I'm I'm recording with a belly full of Father's Day's waffles. (laughs) I just had my Father's Day brunch. So I'm feeling very much in the family spirit and I would say also in some nostalgic spirit, just thinking about, I don't know, other times in my life. And this is a fitting sentiment to introduce my conversation today with Conchetta Trotsky. Conchetta is a longtime friend. I I haven't spoken to her in maybe even more than a decade. It's been a very long time since I was in contact with Conchetta, but we knew each other at what seems like a lifetime ago. And you'll hear we do a fair amount of reminiscing to start about that time when we knew each other. And what a formative time it was for the yoga scene, I would say. And then Conchetta's gone on to do a lot of incredible and interesting study and work in healing trauma and recovering from 
difficult life circumstances. So it was so wonderful to reconnect with her after all of these years. And I'm, I'm very excited to be sharing it with you today. Real quick before we get to it, I want to mention that I've got some upcoming in-person events. On July 29th, I'm going to be in Garden City, New York. September 23rd and 24th, I'm going to be in Manchester, England. And September 30th and October 1st, I'm going to be in Dublin, Ireland. That's July 29th, Garden City, New York. September 23rd, 24th, Manchester, England. September 30th, October 1st, Dublin, Ireland. If you live in any of those places, listen to this show. I'm trying to get out there, and I'd like to hang out with some people. So if you would like to come and share in some practice and some dialogue about things that are important to us, I would very much like to see you there. You can also find out about all my other stuff if you can't come to those in-person events. I've got a full range of online stuff that you can check out, including the fact that the year-long teacher training is still half the regular price for another, I think it's a couple weeks. If you want to get in on that, you can find out about all the stuff, the in-person events, the teacher training, and all the other stuff in between. Go to jbrownyoga.com. Okay, y'all, I still have some Father's Day festivities to get to, so we are going to leave it there. I will touch base with you on the other side, but for now, let's go ahead and get to it. Let's listen to this conversation that I had with Conchetta Trotsky. Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hello, Conchetta. Jay, how are you? I am well. Oh, my God. Blast from the past voice. <laughs> oh it's amazing to hear your voice. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Listen, I'm already recording. And if it's okay with you, I want us to consider ourselves having just begun. Absolutely. Love it. So is it Jay or Jason? What do you prefer? You know, you know me long enough to remember a time when people might have still been calling me Jason. Absolutely, I do. <laughs> Jason Brown. <laughs> it was that early on, but it wasn't that long after when, like, because it was maybe even before the internet. Like, I don't even remember. Like, well, no, the internet was there, but it wasn't what it is now. It was like AOL. Yeah, 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 just like we just got email or something. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't, so, so back then, so basically as soon as there was the internet, I very quickly discovered that there was another Jason Brown teaching yoga in New York City. Okay, that makes sense. So, so I started going by J Brown, just J period, because I kind of fancied it as kind of literary looking. <laughs> and he actually little. went by his middle name. He went by Jason Ray Brown. Shout out to Jason Ray Brown. If he ever listens to the show, I should probably get him on because we have, were kind of doppelgangers at one point. That would be amazing. I think that uh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> I, uh, I, I will. Yeah. Well, then now we've covered that. So I guess I can call you Jason or Jay. I'm going to see what comes out. If that's that's okay. totally good by me. You you have license. Anybody has license to call me either. I would answer to either. But I would say at this point, even my daughters and my wife call me Jay. Oh, wow. Okay. But I don't know. It's like, you can call me Jason. I don't mind. That's I'd amazing. still answer to it. Okay. And you know what's really lovely for me and the listeners of this show might appreciate this is that in my time as a yoga teacher, there's really like two decades that I think of. I mean, it was started a little bit before, but there's two decades where I was like telling everybody I was a yoga teacher and essentially like paying my rent that way. And those periods of time were from 1997 to 2007. And then from 2007 to 2017. And the latter 10 years is when I had the yoga center. But the, the er, that first 10 years, 97 to 2007, I consider that kind of the golden, the golden mm -hmm. period for me. Because 
it's hard to believe what it was like at that time. And I don't have contact with very few people I knew from back then. And I get to talk to you today. <laughs> so thank you for doing this, Conchita. I appreciate you giving me this time. Oh, it's my pleasure. When you reached out, it was, I remembered you immediately, obviously. Mm. You're an unforgettable human. Mm. And it was so lovely to hear from you. My pleasure. And also to wax nostalgic is, is a great joy of mine these days. So I'm happy to share. Um, yeah, with you as well. What a magical time in the city, in our lives, in yoga. Um, yeah, I, I think it was a golden era. Registered Yoga Alliance was not invented yet. So. No, not when I was Very. talking to you. And yeah. I, my memory is, I don't know if you have a better memory of me. Sometimes I try to pinpoint some date and time, but I have a memory of speaking to you at Go Yoga in the Girdle Factory before <laughs> it moved around the corner to 6th Street. Yes, on Bedford Avenue. Yes. I believe it was, I want to say 2000, 2000, 2001. Yes. That's exactly what I was, I was going to say 2000. It, it yeah. was as early as 2000, but it might have been 2001. That's when I remember it too. Perfect. Yeah. We both remember it right. We're yeah. not that old. We still have no. memories. <laughs> We're totally sane. That's <laughs> wonderful. Well, I don't know if we should go that far, but I would. <laughs> I guess I'm wondering, I can't remember, were you teaching at Go or were you just taking classes there? I can't remember. Yeah. Well, I started working at Go Yoga in 2000 and I was the manager of the yoga studio. Mm. Um, and so I was the front desk person and the person who washed the mats and blankets by hand at the laundromat around the corner on 6th Street, carting everything um, in a big wheelie cart all of the all of the props and also I was yeah doing all the books and um, managing the teachers and the events and then in 2001 I went to um, Shivananda in upstate New York and did my yoga training and so then I was teaching and I think I taught there for about a year and a year and a, I don't know maybe a year and a half um, so yeah, it was really, it was really a special, I was already practicing, um, before I, before I scored, um, meeting Lilia at just the right moment, like walking in Lilia Mead, who's the owner, shout out to Lilia. Shout she's out. She's cool. been on the show years ago, but I first yeah, started it. She's so cool. She's doing her, her master's in counseling now, which oh. I think is very cool. Well, um, you know about so, that. Like, it's interesting because yeah. she moved to LA, right? And then she's yeah, like, yeah, know. she's in LA. I actually, been, visited her there once. And Jada, do you remember Jada Carano? She, oh my god, she, yes. yeah. Is she in LA too. She's in LA too. I hung out with her and her husband Sven, who she met while we were all at Go Yoga, and. Yeah, I mean it's a real it's a real special place to still have such connection. I consider you a beautiful extension of that. It just feels like home to me. Yes. So, yeah, so I spent so it was really like my birth ground of like like a uh, what's what do you want what do I want to say? Like a paid um what it, what is the thing where you do a, a crash course? Uh, not a crash course. A, a boot camp. It was a paid boot camp of yoga experience for me in every mm -hmm. sense of the world. Word managing a studio, um, you know, managing the teachers, the clients, and then teaching as well. And then mm -hmm. I wasn't managing anymore, so I got to really evolve in the world of yoga. And it was such a devout, beautiful time. I remember practice was so in earnest, and we had such beautiful studios in Manhattan. We have to we have to paint a picture for some people who weren't yeah. around at that time or weren't into yoga at that time because we're talking about like what? A, it's a single room yoga, a single room sole proprietor yoga studio. Lilia opened it. The room was what? Couldn't have been a thousand, twelve hundred square feet. I don't I don't even remember how yeah. many mats we could fit in there. 30, yeah. 40 tops, right? Couldn't fit yes. any more than that. No, it was super cozy. It had hardwood floors. It had beautiful windows with gates that opened on like a Brooklyn backyard kind of feel mm -hmm. with the radiator, which was also the altar. Yes, uh <laughs> that's right. It did have that front entry room. And you talked about how your job as a manager was like going around the corner to do the laundry. And I remember that job 
It would be like one of those, like what we used to call them granny carts. Yes. And you'd have to, you'd have like a stack of blankets and mats. (laughs) He'd be like pushing his granny cart around the corner to the laundromat. I did it for my center too. Cause that's where you did it. That's the way yes. we did it back then. We didn't have laundry in the basement nope. or whatever, you know? No. And it was so beautiful. I remember being so happy and so in heaven walking the granny cart, squeaking the wheels with the damp mats on the way back and having to like swing them over certain parts of the, the like changing room bar so they could dry. Um, it was awesome. It was such a beautiful, and also for the listener, Bedford Avenue in Williamsburg in 2000 was on freaking point. It was the coolest. It, but it was, was coolest. it was still, but it was outskirts still. It, it like now, if you go, there's like Prada. It's like Soho yeah. now. It's yeah, it's like, wild. It's so weird. There was a protest, a massive protest on Bedford Avenue in front of the mall, the Girdle Mall, to keep Starbucks out. When right, because they had the local coffee. They yeah. didn't succeed, though. They didn't succeed. No. <laughs> that was a Whole Foods and a gold gym yes. and all the things. Yeah. Oh, my God. But back then, it was sketch. I remember, actually, earlier on, I had a friend. They had found – we were – back in the day, I was in acting school. You have, like, a dance background some, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I started – Dancing before yoga, actually. Well, in this lifetime. Um, <laughs> fair well, maybe. enough. Actually, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> yeah, fair <laughs> enough, know. though. Fair <laughs> enough. But I, I, I did, in this lifetime, start um, training. I was living in Spain before I moved back to Williamsburg. So I was living in Barcelona, Barcelona, for mm. four years. And I started um, modern and, and ballet. And I was doing that. And so movement was always a really massive part of my mental health and physical health. And then I started getting sick. Um, I started feeling really stressed out and weird. And that's when I stopped dancing because it, it was, it was, I was doing it hardcore. I was like 19, 20. I was doing, you know, four hours a day of really intense movement. Um, and so I thought, wow, I'm not doing well with this. I need to take a pause. And that's when I, started practicing yoga in earnest. I was practicing it always, but I really, really started focusing on the mental and energetic benefits of the practice. And then the spiritual piece, um, which was always really strong for me, took center. And so that's when I walked into Go Yoga and I just met Lilia there. And I said, hey, I'd love to know if you have any work exchange. And she was like, today's your lucky day. I need (laughs) someone. I started like the next week. It was just like, it was instant. Um, I just walked in. I was cater waitering in New York City, traveling the subways with a tuxedo and a bag. Um, you know, there was a lot of us on the trains and, you know, doing like the, you know, the, the Met Gala and all these fancy pants things. And um, I mean, it was fun, but super hard also on, on, on the body, right? It's like a lot of work. It's a lot of labor. We're getting home at three in the morning, lifting mm-hmm. tables. Like it was just a strenuous work. So yoga was just something I wanted to do to like chill and to find balance. And it actually was one of those things that worked out exactly the way I wanted it to. And it was perfect. So yeah, that's well, how I was, I was thinking. That. Cause I had some college friends on, Oh, maybe a year or two ago. And we talked about how at that time in New York city and the surrounding boroughs, I was going to say like, there was a, such a thriving like art community, whether it was dance or other kinds of arts. Yeah. yeah. And I had a friend, I remember early on before Lilia had go, who had found like a, a whole floor of like a warehouse building in Williamsburg. Yeah. But it was yeah. still super sketchy and they got like broken in and held up at gunpoint. <gasps> like the first month they were yeah. there and then they all freaked out and left. Oh, but no. by the time, but by the time <gasps> Lilia had that place in the girdle factory, it had turned and the gentrification had just started and it was not bad at all yet. You know, <laughs> it, was, so, it was that cool combination of like really where you felt like you were on this cutting edge of something brand new and there was that fresh energy mm-hmm. and like, remember, I don't know if you remember this, but I was, um, I was sitting at the front desk of Go Yoga and like Bjork came in and like started 
like shopping at the mall, like that, like the fact that Bjork would come would be like, that's the kind of space it was. It was like very underground feeling. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry to hear that about your friends, but it, it probably turned pretty quickly. Oh yeah. No, that was just like an early time, but the idea was you would, we were looking to find spaces where we could like make things and like it was, and a lot of us like you too, we were maybe kind of exposed to yoga when we were studying, like I was studying acting and it was part of the movement component. Mm. But at some point I became very disenchanted with like waiting tables and the idea of trying to be an actor. Mm. And then yoga became like more of a focus. Was there a point where like you let go of dance and went towards yoga? Yeah. Just, just like what I shared because I was feeling physically ill. Like Mm. I didn't like, and I was listening to my body and my body didn't want that kind of pressure Mm. and yoga had a different kind of pressure, but it was the kind that was connected to like observing the pressure and using the pressure as practice and then letting go Mm. of the pressure. And so it was a real beautiful um, exploration. I totally paused on dance um, not for too long because then I was in Williamsburg and then there were so many cool things going on. So I started Dancing at Wax. I forgot the name. Williamsburg Art Nexus, which was oh, around the right. corner. Yeah, I danced for the company there. And then Tammy Stronach. I don't know if you remember her. Yes. She- oh, my God. What a <laughs> name. You know what? Oh, yeah. my God. I have like a public confession. I've talked to people about this before. Tammy, if Tammy ever heard this, she, I, there was only a few teachers I invited to teach at my place when I opened oh. it in 2007, and she was one of them. Wow. But, but I was very inexperienced and stressed out at the very beginning, and she was kind of like had a lot of things going on and like didn't show up to class a couple of times, and I like didn't handle it good. Mm, she was and I like bruised the friendship, and I look back on it to this day. I learned a valuable lesson from it, of course. Yeah. But oh I always God. felt bad about it. I was like, oh, I did Tammy wrong, you know? Duh. And I even apologized back then, but still, you know? Yeah. Oh, but anyways, I thought, Tammy, I so Tammy it. was there, huh? <laughs> well, she had the coolest dance company ever. Yes, oh, she did. I, I don't know if it was called Stronach Dance, or, but she was just badass, man. I loved her. And she was yes. going out with... Um, Mikey from Mikey's Mike? Hookup. They're back in Williamsburg. <laughs> they left, but they're back, I heard. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, they're back. I, They've I, got I, one in the West Coast and one now. They they opened another one back in Brooklyn. Stop I think. it. Wait, are you kidding me? I think so, unless that was like a mistaken email that they sent. But oh, I no, heard. I would love – please share that with me um, when we close. I don't know. Anyways, they were, they were super the, super cool. They were I loved cool. them. Oh, my God. That was the perfect time. Yeah, so the, there was this thriving art scene – Because the scene at that time, like 1999 to like early 2000s in New York was so, again, I keep saying in earnest, and I I know there was obviously pretension because there's everywhere, but to me, maybe it was where I was in my life. I just saw people really, really caring. And I think yoga had so much respect for its traditions and its roots. And there weren't like fusion things. I mean, I guess there that's was like- what I want to ask you about. I always say, yeah. sorry to interrupt you, but I no, always, I always say that like at that time when I first was getting into yoga, it still felt like it was, it really had like a mystical or like yeah. spiritual orientation much, yeah. much yeah. more so than it did later on. Am I crazy or did you feel that way too? I felt that way too. I think a lot of people were like first generation, I mean, just straight from Mysore or straight from like um, Pune. Like, I, I mean, people came, we were yeah, still yeah. studying. Like I, I've studied with Patabi Joyce like in person, you know what I mean? Like we were oh, still, did you go to one of those big, huge New York oh God, I totally events at like the puck feet. building or whatever? Yes, I went to the puck building and I kissed his oh, feet and whatever you do. I did oh the whole thing. Oh my God. That was like 600 people or something. It was like beautiful. That. But like, that was like a thing that we could do. And then I went, I went to Pune at Iyengar's. I think the sun was there. Like I, right. I it was like the people with like the, the, some of the OGs, I guess, kind of OGs were still floating around. Jiva yeah. Muki was too cool for school. It was amazing. Yes. And that like amazing space they had by Astor Place. And right. it just felt like everything. Yeah. Like it felt reverential. It felt really special. Everything felt really sacred and new and exciting and, and 
yeah, clear. And I think that a lot of lineage was being re- really respected still and honored. And my trainings in Shivananda, and it was just pure, pure. I mean, that's like all right. I mean, two. Th- I, I I saw it was like two thousand one Shivananda mm-hmm. training. There yeah. was that was back when there was really only a few options. <laughs> there wasn't yeah, that was many Shiv- like formal teacher trainings that you Shivananda Ashtanga. I don't even think Ashtanga had a formal teacher training. Well, Maybe they, they, they had well. like a not a tap on the forehead or whatever it was. <laughs> right? That's right. That was yeah, your, yeah. <laughs> your transmission. You could yeah, have. whatever. The process <laughs> what, what was. What was your background in, Jay? What was? I went to Jiva Mukti early on in like 94, 95 originally. And then I wow. sort of honed in on a couple teachers, one or two teachers there, and then ended up studying pretty closely with Allison West. I don't know if you That's remember right. Allison That's West. Right. She had a space on Broom Street across from yeah. Eddie's place. Oh Who Eddie's God. back there. He has that same old space, which is Stop kind it. of great. That's amazing. I didn't know that. That's yeah, great. He, they lost it, and then he got it back again. And now it's actually formally a temple, a a Ganesha temple, which is very interesting. It's like on on the books as a temple rather than a yoga center. How about that? (laughs) Uh, Yes. So no, nobody can uh, mess with it. So it's well, I guess there are probably some legal reasons for that, but also just I think Eddie's very always been very devotional that way. Yeah. Um, So so in any case, I studied with Allison, and then I found my way to Desika Tar teachings through Mark Whitwell and some right. other folks. That's right. And I remember, wow. you know, Lilia was really, and then you were the manager too. The thing I remember about that time, and I've told the story before, but was that it was a really t- a time where yoga center owners were supportive of teachers. Yeah. In a way that like later on, like when we think about yoga center owners, there's like all this animosity towards yoga center owners by yoga teachers, you know? Lily was so cool. She was such a badass. She started that thing with like her own money, I believe. Sorry, Lily, if I'm misquoting this, but I remember the vision I have, my recollection is that she was just so grassroots and 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 worked so hard and designed everything by herself and and paid everyone in a very fair, I think, way, you know, at a time where um yeah, there wasn't really a standard for that, I don't think. And really cared and and really tried to practice what she preached. And it wasn't an easy, and maybe you can you connect it to this later when you became a, a yoga studio owner, is like it's not easy to balance so many things and so many personalities and so many pressures. Um, I just always really admired her, especially as a woman. I think that was the main cool thing for me, um, was that she was just doing so much and um, caring really deeply. I I'm really honored and, and grateful that I got to hang with everyone in such a cool way and that she recognized my value and yeah, I had a blast with it. And uh, yeah, yeah, I it's, thought it's I really think cool I, yeah, very cool vibes. And I, I remember taking class with her at Jiva Mukti before she opened. Go. Yeah. That's what she started and, too. Yeah. Yeah. And I just thought she was a teacher who like, I don't know. She was for real. Like she, yes. she had like a certain gravitas about her as yes. a teacher that I really respected. Absolutely. So when the opportunity came up and for me, it was through Gab Casper, Gabrielle Casper. I don't know if you remember Gab. Of course I remember Gab. Yeah, uh, Gab hooked class. me up because oh, wow. Gab knew me. And then kind of when I f- found out that Lilia had the place and I guess the story I was going to tell is because Lilia was, was the person whose center I was teaching at most when mm-hmm. I made kind of a transition at some point where I had been teaching a pretty much kind of Jiva Mukti style, you know, more like power, powerish flow kind of class, which became the popular thing. And at some point I made a big change and started doing kind of this breath centered Desika Char inspired thing a bit more. I remember all of that because I you do see because I tell a story about how at some point people were kind of like not that into it, and I remember people actually like going to Lilia and saying something to her yeah. about it, and yeah. her having a meeting with me and me explaining to her that I was I, want, I was doing something different, and she really respected it, and she yes. came to class and she understood yeah. what I was doing and supported me, which just 
sounds like you don't hear that story about yoga center owners, but you were there. So you kind of saw that. I remember all of that. Thank you for that. And what a beautiful thing. I think that's a really beautiful story about Lilia is that she really believed in the practice as a practice and the roots of it and the spirit of it. And I think that is such a great example of how she would support. She supported me. I was brand new. I had just graduated. I started subbing, I think, I mean, uh, you know, from my training. And then I think I probably was subbing before I even took my training. And then, yeah, like let me have my own class and got me on the schedule. And I mean, I grew so much. I got to take class anytime I wanted. And I got to, to study with amazing people like you and Gabriella and Lilia and Tammy and, and, and Joelle and like a bunch mm. of people that like taught me. I learned so much. I still probably use cues that I learned from you and from other people <laughs> there because it was my, you know, it's like, it was like learning a new language. So like that, those were the, I picked up everyone's cues um, and like the way that we would you know, just segue into the like, transition into things. And um, I remember your transition and I remember really respecting you for it because I could feel your energy like softening and, and it felt to me like it was more profound and deeper and less performative, not you as a person, but the, the, the way you were emanating the energy felt like it was really dropping into a heart space. And that can be really vulnerable and tender to do, especially when you were like the too cool for school tattooed hot dude who was doing all the power stuff. <laughs> yeah. And people were people were coming for that, right? They were like, yeah. you know, that was how I would like earn respect food. originally is like, yeah. oh, I'm I'm the one in the room who can do the handstand better than oh, anybody else. Or I remember whatever. you demonstrating that. Yeah. I like made I a point of demonstrating it often to you whatever. You stopped doing stuff like that. I you stop. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like there was like a performative quality. That and I and I really I don't mean that in a negative way other than mm, what no, right? no I get it. Where it's like because that was the piece I was always flirting with, like n- really like knowing in my body that I wasn't coming from a place of like showing off or and it was rough because people really wanted to pedestal, I think, teachers and they still do, but back then it was a real culty kind of thing, like we all well, our models problems. were not very good. Yeah, John <laughs> Friend and all of these like charismatic Richard dudes. Freeman's, yeah, totally. You know, like totally. commanding the big groups. And so we yeah. didn't have very good examples we were necessarily following. <laughs> but we did right. all learn because shit happened, as we all know, you know. Totally. Anyway, oh. and that's a beautiful thing to remember is that we were doing the best we could. And, you know, for me, it was always this really a practice of feeling good in my skin and channeling and being an open place for spirit to move. I still do that today. Like that's just who I am. Mm. So when I was starting to feel all about conchetta, it didn't feel good to me. Like the vibration felt fuzzy and I couldn't teach from a place like that. So it was a really great place to continue to feel into where something was coming from, where the teachings were coming from, what part of my body was tense, what I was feeling or thinking, was I criticizing myself? So all this to say, when you made your change, I was still very, very young in my teaching. And I, I just really admired that. And it was a great inspiration for me. So thank you for that Hmm. moment. You may not know, um, but I really, really learned a lot. And I remembered thinking like, I actually remember doing more in your class when you were dropping in um, and really just enjoying it. It was softer. It was warmer. um, It was lovely. Thank you for that memory. I had forgotten. Oh, I I thank you for reliving (laughs) through it because it's so important for me, especially since to talk to someone who was like there at the time. And I just, I so am so grateful for that. And, and I guess the, the part where my heart feels a little bit, oh, is that because the, the real value of the to- that time in centers like that is like teachers had the opportunity to grow into themselves yes. as teachers. Like yes. we had space to like yes. figure out our practice and who our voices and all that stuff that they say that you need to do. But now it, then it became like you had to do it during the 200 hours. And then when you were done, you were like thrust into it. And you're supposed uh, to be this like fully formed teacher. So rough. Well, and there's so <laughs> many now, right? Like there's yes. so many, I was just in New York actually yesterday and I was mm. talking, 
friend of mine who owns a few yoga studios. And we were talking about how, like, how many thousands of teachers, yoga teachers there are now and how many different places and trainings and like, cause they're getting applicants all the time. And I remember I was like, you know, it's interesting. I wonder about that quantity and quality. And like you said, spaciousness, but now there's like social media and there's like, there's so many different ways that I think people have an entry into yoga. Um, and I think that there can be some benefits to that, but also some disadvantages. I I'll be honest. I'm not really like a big part of the studio scene right now, especially not in New York. Um, so I, well, would be- you know, that's what I was going to say that like, well, I don't know. I'm not part of the studio scene anymore either. Okay, I moved I away, I but I, I moved to Pennsylvania in 2017, right. but we get there. I would say that what's interesting to me is that there was a point, like I said, from like two, th- 1997 to probably around, I mean, probably started earlier. I said, you know, 2007 is when I opened my center, but there was like a time where we all started to realize like where you hit a certain point after you're doing it for a while. That's why I opened the center where it's like, I, there's only so many yoga classes I can teach in a week. Yeah. And there's only so much I can make per yoga class. And right. I was teaching like 22 classes a right. week and making God. whatever I was making. But let's also say at that time in those early aughts, I had an apartment in the Lower East Side of Manhattan for $500 a month oh. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like we didn't need, I didn't need to make a lot of money at that time. Right. You could still get an apartment for that cheap at that point. Right. Uh, right. But there was a moment where a lot of us realized, okay, there's like, there's such a, there became a saturation even at that early time. And a lot of people looked towards other modalities or other training or kind of started moving in other directions. And I was looking at your bio and it looked like you went in a, what a dance movement therapy direction. Is that right? Yeah. I, I, well, I was teaching, let me see. I did. I taught all through my twenties. I started really communing with the spiritual peace, the practice, well, all the limbs, right? So not just asana. Yeah, um, I kind of remember you having that that all the way there spiritual vibe back then. Did you do kirtans <laughs> and stuff? I kind of yeah. remember you with a bindi on maybe yeah. going to kirtans, right? Yeah, back in the day, it was totally yeah. cool. And um, yeah, I, yeah, all the limbs. So I started moving because I went to India um, while I was still teaching. So all the money I saved from to go to India and to travel was all from teaching and managing go yoga. So that was I did the I, same thing. I saved it for two years and went yeah, to India. That's yeah. what we did, right? We That's all made we our did. Mechas. We made our p- pilgrimage, right? It was yeah. like the thing. Cause, and it was, it was so magical. And I went to work at Shivananda in Kerala at their ashram there for three months. And I really sunk into my teaching there and it was amazing. And then there I was teaching also meditation and also leading kirtan and also um, because their structure is very, um, every morning we had satsang, we had kirtan every morning and then Mm -hmm. we had meditation and then we, I mean, that was all the practice and it was engaged. So I did that in India. And then after that, I went to, um, I'm not going to do this in the correct order, but at some point I went to France and I, I lived and worked with Thich Nhat Hanh and Plum Village. Oh, I, I didn't know that. You spent yeah. time there doing that. Wow. Yeah, I was with them. I was teaching meditation there. I was helping the retreat fan, like because they had lots of guests coming through. Right. And I was um, seriously considering joining their sangha. So I was really in training to see whether or not I would become a nun um, with 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 Kai with with Thich Nhat Hanh. and I shaved my head and I was practicing with the sisters and the brothers. And I really, really was like, I think I found what I'm doing because they were all young. It was a very young Sangha. Everybody was in their like twenties and thirties and they were so beautiful and so cool. And I just wanted to dedicate my life to spirit and to loving people. (laughs) And um, yes, that's what I'm talking about. (laughs) That's what yoga was about when I got into it. 
Exactly. Well, that's all. That was all the reason I did it. I didn't do it to like make a freaking, you know, scorpion. I know. And then we were doing handstands or whatever the hell we were doing. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but that was the challenge, right? The challenge was do a handstand from a place of service, from a place of curiosity, from a place of inquiry, from a place Mm -hmm. of, of, of noticing, you know, what it means to persevere and to continue. I mean, it's a moving, beautiful form and to use your body. I don't mean to knock handstands. You're right. Yeah. I mean, handstands are, are fucking, yeah, I can love, right? I can get into a handstand done in the right <laughs> context for the right reasons, all that. Yeah, absolutely. Handstands are awesome. I don't have a problem yeah. with handstands. I guess I meant that that early t- this early time that we're talking about when you went to India and I made a trip there, not quite as long as you, it doesn't sound like, but that time, even though it was different because like our teachers had gone like whenever in the 60s and 70s and come back but even those meccas that we made we were still kind of immersing ourselves yeah in a in a yoga that was not like right what most Social people medium. came to later on yeah you know yeah. no it was it was all about the practice and it was all about like shiva and it was all about like actually knowing like what i was doing and what the you know that's where i went to visit um osho and where i went you know, like i did all the things and i could like i went away for six months and then came back and just picked right up at go like that's yes, how that's really she was so would cool. give you your classes yeah back. she's Are so you cool kidding? she's like you're back yeah yes because you I mean, also would be like, like kind of cred because you went to india and total cred man yeah, and yeah. then you and you also like i felt extra way amazing and like vibrating and sure like, you wanted oh, to share you had all this energy yeah. and it was so great so yeah so i did that and then i ended up moving i think well wait, wait what, why did you not stay with Thich Nhat han why did you choose not oh, to become gosh, a member of Thich Nhat for han? Asking. thank you for asking jay because that was a real heartbreaking moment um i went to i went with a disc man into the woods um, in France around Plum Village and I started dancing and I was dancing with the trees and I, I don't remember the music I was listening to. It was a CD. And yes, uh, for those who don't know what a disc <laughs> man is, it was a portable CD player <laughs> that, that you used to have. Flat. It was you a big thing on it. your belt <laughs> before we had iPods and all that other stuff. Oh yeah. You had to keep it flat or it would skip. <laughs> And they and, had those uh, batteries that lasted only so long. Yes, you know, packs of batteries we travel with and like books of CDs. Yes. Oh man. So God. you oh, so you were in the forest? I went to the forest because I was dancing. I was feeling so conflicted and I didn't understand. And I went to the forest and I started dancing and moving. And I remember the trees telling me, you are not supposed to do this. If you do this, you're going to be running away from yourself and you need to be in the world and you need to be serving out there. The world needs you out there. And I was so sad, Jay, because I really thought I had found, like my soul was so restless and I just wanted to find something to devote myself to. You know, I was like, I just want to commit myself. I was 24. I was like, I just want to give myself to something. And I thought I had found it. And then when I was really told, like spirit told, I don't know what now. I mean, now I know it was like probably actually. It's a message. You got a message. I got a great message that was like, you're not supposed to be doing this. And because it was what I really thought I wanted to do, I knew it was true because it was like hard. And I was Mm. like, oh, no, I'm not. I even asked Ty. I even asked Chitnahan. I was like, "What what is the path? You know, is it the highest path to be a monastic? And he said, the highest path is to be a, high, a householder. And I mean, that, you know, these are the language we used. And it was like, the most challenging path is to be a householder because you have to be out there practicing and there's so much more to contend with. And I just remember feeling in my soul, like, oh, like I'm supposed to be a freaking householder. So I got out there and then I, mm-hmm. I got, I went into this weird identity crisis and I was lost. Mm-hmm. And so I just, I, I, that's when I had discovered, okay, I think I need to to formalize this service in some way. And I discovered dance movement therapy was a thing. So I moved to Boulder, Colorado, where Naropa University is. And I was like, this is kind of a perfect blend because it's Buddhist practice, which I was heavily steeped in at the time, and movement. And Boulder was a brand new place. And it was much calmer and more quiet than New York. And 
yeah, I went there and I ended up not actually studying dance movement therapy yet. I moved to Boulder. I ended up teaching yoga, managing another studio called. Yeah, Alchemy you had the Systems. skills. You know how to do it at that. I just point. wanted to do it. Yeah, and by then yeah. I was like a seasoned pro teacher, so I felt badass. And yeah. but then I started dancing again. I did ballet out there, and then I started. Um, something happened, and somehow I started acting. And I just kept getting all these roles, like lead roles in plays. And then I got an agent and then I was doing commercials and then I was doing voiceovers and then I was doing like videos. And so then I was just like acting. So like, I just kind of followed where I guess I, I led. But it was If you are hearing this message, then you're listening to the free version of J Brown Yoga Talks. To hear the rest of our conversation, please subscribe to Podcast Premium at jbrownyoga.com slash premium.